right. Standing ovation. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at least let you get comfortable yes, thank before you. we leave. Give me the nod when you're comfy. comfy. Oh, I'm good. Thank you. That room was so powerful. <laughs> I could hit a little harder. I'd like to call to order. The Budget Advisory Committee meeting of today, August 19th, I think. Okay. Uh, do we have a quorum? We do, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Roll call. Chair McCloy? Here. Vice Chair Hales? Here. Mr. Kuras? Here. Ms. Hall is absent. Mr. Bergerman? Here. Okay, shall we dive into the <laughs> agenda right away? I'd Only so. two subjects, but they're both <laughs> I say both are very meaty, <coughs> meaty. Okay. Uh, let's go into the sanitation proposals. Um, could I ask someone to explain to me something? I looked at this originally as a, you know, vendors, three vendors, and five, five, Base case is kind of as is. Then there's alternative A, alternative B, alternative C, and alternative D. I read it about 10 times. I might be a little bit slow, but can, can you briefly explain to me what alternative A, B, C, and D are? I'd be happy to do that. Thank you. And you can bring it down to my Tom, second grade. And Janine here's also, if it gets anything into the purchasing aspect, I want Janina to take it from the actual purchase and the bid aspect. He's the one who's been in charge of this and involved in all these bids that haven't had any controversy until this year. So, Well, I'll, I'll start off first is that, yeah, I've been doing this for 16, 17 years now. This is like our fourth contract that I've dealt with. And over the years, we've gotten a lot of questions uh, regarding the type of service, whether it's going to be, uh, yeah, customer-owned containers, you know, the recycling containers. So over the years, we kept on getting questions on whether we wanted 65-gallon uh, uh, you know, uh, contractor supply containers, 95-gallon contractor supply ca containers, containers for uh, uh, recycling, containers for yard waste. So we put those together, and the A, B, C, D meets those questions we've had over the years on whether let the residents supply the containers and or the contractors supply the, the containers. So today, yes. then we'll go into A, B, C, D. Right. Today, as a resident, mm -hmm. I buy my garbage container, correct? Yes, sir. And, but they're supplied to me, or is it 18 gallons, the small green ones? Yes. Okay. Okay, yard waste. Well, I'm, I'm in a townhouse now, so I don't worry about yard waste, <laughs> but I remember owning a house, you know, packaging it up in certain days. Okay, got it. That's the base case. Now, what is Alternative A? Alternative A was going to 65-gallon uh, containers uh, supplied by the uh, contractor. Really going to Tom, we put all those in there. In hindsight, you know, trying to deal with we're not going with any of them as no. we go forward. As we brought forward this bid, yes. we're bringing the straightforward bid right. as it is without those alternatives. So the the base bid, which is what we what this is the, the, these prices we're talking about, is is what with the service we're having right now is with the with the with the uh, own, the homeowner supplied or uh, container uh, with a base uh, recycling bin, fifteen gallons of recycling bin. That's the base. Okay, and yep. that's and that's what I so brought forward. So are we saying we should completely just Block out alternative A, B, C, and D? Yes, because we did not bring those forward as an alternative to the board. We looked at them and looked at the cost, but, but uh, you know, the decision to bring forward to the board um, was the way it is now. And that's the three we have on this spreadsheet. And that's the, bit, and that's the, the, bid, that's the base bid, yes. Without any alternatives. So I shouldn't, I, 
worth basically saying that the ten times I rode that was read that A, <laughs> A B C D, I didn't have to do it. It was painful. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, afterwards, just tell me what A B C. Just for my own. Yeah. I, I will. I will. Yes, sir. Just tell me what they are. Okay. Um, Give me the gist because it just landed, just landed today. The survey. Always good to know what the quote customer wants. What was, what were the highlights of that survey? Well, I don't know if there's any particular highlights. Uh, the survey asked a number of questions. One is whether they preferred uh, a service. The cost was what was most important was the cost. Uh, and that was, was the schedule. That was the second one and the third ones. They, had, they didn't have an opinion on it. Uh, and it fell the same way with the next couple. Let me get my copy here. I want to say this was, this was something we had to put together Hardly. in a day. In fact, the meeting went much longer to try to decide to quit because we're in a bid process. This is right. kind of unusual in a bid process. This is not – so in a bid process, we had to have the concern of we have to write the questions – we got to be careful because however we write them, somebody's going to say they're slanted. Right. Um, so we pay more attention to legally without within the bid process and the legal ramifications. We ended up after, again, we thought it was going to be a half hour meeting. I bet you it went an hour and a half or maybe even more back and forth getting people. Um, we really came down with these two basic questions. Um, again, and the big contention is, I think one of the contentions is, I guess the board thinks that it wasn't comparing apples and oranges. Um, one bid, and it all has to do with the days of the week that the people are here, um, as opposed to, and we won't get into Tom's and the counts and stuff, but a five-day-a-week schedule and a two-day-a-week schedule. And, of course, the company made clear that the cost being when you get to the bottom line of what you see on the thing, $8 million over the five-year contract less was based on that five-day schedule. Um, so the question to residents, the disruption of your schedule you had not been used to, if you're on one side of town, it's Monday and Thursday. If you're on the other side, it's, it's Tuesday and Friday. Switch on, you know, is that schedule that you're used to and the trucks in town those times, does that make more difference to you than an $8 million over five years or a one one dollar and something increase as opposed to eight dollar increase a month on your thing. Which which one of those to you is, is more important? Obviously, we're looking at it as a straight bid. We've got a bid in. We've got it out there. There's the results of the bid. You're looking at them here, board. Here's here's your bids and here's the results. Their question was to try to get from the public is w which one was more Im important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bring that as actually, which of the following is the most important consideration in choosing a sanitation provider? Uh, cost, cost, number of days of service, or other? And then the other that people put some better, that was fairly low amount. And I even think in the RFP that we sent out to all three, it weighted 55% cost and 15, 15, 15, three other criteria. Um, Correct. So we can ignore alternative A, B, C. <laughs> you, can, you can tell me later. For, for, just, for, the, for time or lies, I suggest yeah, that. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. So how do we proceed in this presentation? I well, mean, I, I can see I can see numbers. Can I ask some questions sure. before we proceed? So waste management versus waste pros, an $8 million difference. Okay, that's one thing. We, but for waste management, that's our current contractor. And how much of an increase over our current contract is this new bid? How much of a percentage increase is that? 6.2%. Uh, six, 6 well, Ron, Ron's got, got exactly. the money question, so let's bring the money, man. He's got the purchasing money. person, the money man, and the boots on the ground, the man. Manager, yeah. <laughs> Finance person here. Yeah. Okay. Ron <laughs> we recognize you. It's it, what's on your spreadsheet there too. The increase is like for single family residential for waste pro six point nine five percent. 
And if you go across, well, so I go down for keeping with the single, I'm sorry, keeping with single family, if you go across, waste management would increase $8.46 per month, a 51% increase. Orion Waste going up $12.41 a month, a 75% increase. That's to the resident. Yes. The contract cost to the city. What's the difference? Because it looks like you've got like four million something in the budget. About, about twenty percent total. So twenty. Yeah. And what's the factors? Which is. What, and I know we might have some representatives here. What's the factors behind that level of an increase from current to new bid? I mean, I know cost increase and all that, but just seems a little high. The factors behind it? Well, uh, well, I'm just saying waste management, if the current contract that we're in right now and now our new bid for the for a renewal, possibly, is 20% more than current, 20% increase. Which so, is passed on to the resident so, right. or the commercial business. So how is Waste Pro coming in so much less? So mm -hmm. I guess I'm looking for what's the difference between the two bids and the well, service level? Well, yeah, now we're to purchase <laughs> 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 so I'll try to answer your questions. Janina Lewis, uh, Procurement Services Director. So the difference is Waste Pro's bid is bid on being running trucks in the city all week, like five days a week. Okay? And I'm not sure. Well, if I'm a resident, how many days am I picked up? Three days. Three. You'll get um, two trash days and one recycle day. I agree. Okay. And they're on one side of town. Um, yeah, yeah so for part and part for the other. I'm not sure the total breakout. Two trash days and one recycle day, Correct. I think, per for, for waste pros. For bid. waste pro, yeah. Okay. okay. Got it. This, Got the picture. <laughs> Stay there just in case you're the next this question. <laughs> we'll, we'll switch as the question comes up. <laughs> So this is the case. It'll be a change. It would be a change. It would be a change from current, where it's two days a week. I think Monday and Thursday, and recycling is the same day on Thursday. As a resident, what I would see, well, that's just a, you know, I could be Monday, Thursday, and all the recycling, if I recall, is done on Wednesday. Mine's Thursday, or you but on the Waste Pro contract, I think it would be on Wednesdays. Yeah, that's... That. Yeah. Okay. So, I guess maybe I'm a, a flexible person, and I, I wouldn't get all bent out of shape, but if you told me ahead of time that, Claire, your, your garbage has got picked up Monday and Thursday, and recycling's on Wednesday. Yeah, it's a change for me. But could, could I adjust? Probably. I think I could adjust. But what did the survey say? I know some people, you know, do not change anything in my life and life will be good, no matter how bad it is. And again, the validity of the survey, putting it out and people looking at it cold, Again, we just have to Did take. Did you just put we it just out have recently? To take it out. Well, it had to from the commission meeting. You know, we were told yeah. two things: go to the budget advisory committee before the next meeting, which is two weeks. Do the survey, get it out. Go before the board, which would have to be this day before. So you're talking within. You know, we still haven't reached two weeks yet in the pro. We're a week and a half into the process when we had to start the Wednesday after last Tuesday's meeting. So it is what it is. I got it. I got it. Well, as far as the survey went, as far as the, the overall fund, the most important thing most people was it was 53% uh, uh, for price. 53.4% people chose price over schedule. I remember seeing that on a pie chart. Yes. <coughs> yes like it's... But again, as you can take it, you take it for a wall, it's worth it. There was 53% uh, price over, there was 26% number of days of service, and the other was to be specified, and that was the multiple different answers uh, uh, that we got written to us, some saying, well, we want, we want the price, but we want the same days, and we want bigger carts, and the typical uh, questions or responses you would get to these type of surveys. 
What was the sample size of the surveys, the number of respondents? Uh, 200. 200. Well, 200. Yeah, so it, it went out totally. Thursday? Yeah, it went out so on So we're only talking about, we're only talking about a week, Thursday, and, uh, and we took it at 8 o'clock this morning. The survey's still out there, and yeah. people can still fill it out. But we're going from Thursday. Yeah. I think as of this morning, it was like 200 and, and A little over 200. Response over here. Yeah, look, which was actually pretty good, so. Five, whoever registered were, and 202. <laughs> Yes. Unregistered, I guess. Yes. And it was an open, it was open. It was, you didn't have to register to, to answer the questions. We thought we'd get a better response, which we did. Okay, let's continue to fire any questions. Um, I still want to go back to present day. And Ron, I'm going to need you again. <laughs> <laughs> so in our proposed budget for 2022, you would put in a contract amount four million for the year so I just said okay that's a we are estimating a five-year contract that's 20 million 268 and that's with waste management but their bid comes in at 28 million and I'm still I still don't have the answer to my question why why is that service bid going up eight million from present day mm -hmm. I mean we, we would think the you know, we've all heard of inflation, but right. that's it's, a huge number. It's going to come back to the inflation. Um, based on uh, waste management is actually here. They can mm -hmm. answer that question mm -hmm. if right. need be. Although I don't know how much of that we want to get into because we're still teeting on a treacherous of grounds of a bid process. That I'm process, process okay. correct. Gotcha. Okay. But we can do a clarification in writing to them okay. afterwards. Um, but based on the indexes that we use, there's an oil and gas index, and then there's also the consumer price index. So they're basing their prices pretty much probably off the inflation right. and then the cost of using their trucks. Mm -hmm. They have quite a few more trucks in their proposal than Waste Pro. Okay. And I know the RFP that went out each year can be adjusted, but the it's very specific re regarding the indexing. Correct. Point 0.9 and point 0.10 of the RFP. I just wanted to prove that I actually did read it. <laughs> okay, but it's very specific how it's calculated and must come back and Correct. be blessed or, and you can argue it back and forth. Okay. Uh, and Ron, nip me if I go out of bounds on this, but is there anything here that we should know why one vendor is better than the other vendor? I mean, I can look at numbers. Uh, I mean, if we looked at the numbers, this could be pretty, pretty short meeting, but is there anything here? Like service levels, quality. You know, the unknown is, the unknown is uh, that we deal with this all the time on bids and we have new people taking over for bids. You don't know what you're going to what you're going to get. Um, obviously, we've been with one company for over 20 years, 25 years, and we know them. we've worked with them. Um, we know what change to pull if we have problems. We, we know everything. So changing going to the unknown, you know, is is the unknown. It's hard to gauge, and, and you know, I know some people are going around looking at other cities and other places and problems, and I've told them, well, be careful because you're telling me about the problems of one, and if you Google on the Internet, you'll pro problem problems and rating on the other one. Well, so you can't go with that. It's, when you set up with a city, you set up with city representatives with either company you take, yep. and you set up a team, and you set out ahead of time what the expectations are, and I don't care what you did in – in Seminole or in Colorado or in Arkansas, we demand this and this is what we expect and we're going to be, and, and we, you work it out at the beginning. Yep. Where that goes is a big unknown. We've had a lot of new companies take over and it's been absolutely fabulous from, from companies for air conditions, for different services. It's been fabulous. We've had some that we've lost, the ones we've done, and it's been terrible. We've ended them and gone out to bid. It's been a disaster. You've gone out to bid, and sometimes we've got the old one. Sometimes we've got a different new one that's worked out and stuff. Um, 
again, it's hard to gauge. It's hard to gauge them by what they've done in other cities because we don't know what team they're going to give us yep. um, and how the, how we're going to work together on it. So it's just a it's just a perco- you know you might as well have your crystal ball there and try to try to go on it. You really you can do all the research and stuff you want on those and other cities and other managers I've talked to. You can do all the research you want and. Sometimes cities believe that, man, this change is going to be the best, and it's absolutely disastrous. Some think, I don't know if this is going to work right, and they go, so, so <laughs> it'll really just be an estimate on, on is it going to be a big difference or not? Is one company going to do better or the other one? It's just, and, and that's why we've been treating it for a staff way strictly as a bid process. Here's the bid, here are the numbers, and there's a decision that has to be made. It's not ours, it's the board's, and there's the numbers, there's the facts. Um, yes, there's change in it, yes, there's unknowns in it, but, but from our aspect, here they are, and, uh, and, and I don't think anybody can predict what the future is gonna be, good or bad, if you change, if you stay. I don't think you can do that. Okay. I've seen I, too I much over the years. I've seen point. too much of it, and I've been wrong a lot of times. Got, has gone down. I've been wrong. Things going to be a disaster. It's been great, and the opposite has happened. I know. I know. Tom can tell you many times. That, boy, I didn't think that was work out, and it did. And then we thought it was going to work out, and it's been terrible. So, because I, I hit the website still, and I, I won't even mention the name. It, the, yeah, one website seemed to have a lot of negative feedback from individual customers, but. Yeah, I had a call on that, and I pointed out, well, go this way, go to this Google, and you'll see, you'll go see the other way also. So, okay, you know, which way do you go? It goes both ways, so. And I, yeah, yeah I think, uh, I believe, the Board of Commissioners, when they fired back, said, get this survey, they, what, what they're saying, they really don't want to implement, they don't like to implement a plan and have a bunch of citizens being, Upset, but we can't assume that that's the case. Okay. More questions. I still think, let me just make a statement. I think you ought to wrap all of this up and sell it to Harvard Business School. <laughs> this is a great business case. It touches finance, environment, politics, it touches. Everything. It does. Uh, this is very meaty. think when you're having a purchasing decision you're looking at two things cost and whether you're buying a service or a product quality you know, mm -hmm. and, and sometimes there's a trade-off but 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 am I am I hearing you to evaluate this Take the quality, because mm -hmm. nobody can tell me, oh, this 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 company delivers really bad service. You're going to have 50 uh, residents call a day. We shouldn't assume anything on quality. Treat everybody equally. And again, I think this board decides what, with the time, the circumstances, as much time as you had, what, if anything, this board should be doing. It was told to pass to you, but, I mean, if I was a board member, I can tell you my answer to that, but I'm not going to tell you because, but, um, you know, this is in your lap. So I think, you know, <laughs> it's a tough, it's a tough place to be put into, obviously, because we know, because it's a tough place for we us to be into, so is a tough place for this board to try to make an advice decision on something that's been going on and processed and reviewed for weeks and weeks and weeks. And uh, you've got it in less than a week's time. You've got your backup. Is there any input? You said you don't want 
we're, we're, we're kind of open. I, I just don't see how this board can make a fair. <laughs> I just I, I mean, maybe you you can, but I, I don't I, see how this I, board I can, can expect I can to make. Look at this and say, okay, if it's strictly a numerical decision, you know, this meeting's over in five minutes. Yeah. But I keep asking myself because I've had purchasing report to me before. Is there something else here other than pure raw numbers that should be considered? Now, I know we have the vendors here. and mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I mean, if I... I well, you're right. It's, I mean, purely on the numbers, you look at it, and it's an easy decision. But ultimately, too, the, all this cost gets passed on to the residents, so it's really the residents that need to have more of a say and I know y'all didn't have long to put the survey together but what I read through the survey a lot of people did say cost was their number one thing but then when you read all the comments but I like what I have love what I have don't change it I don't really want to pay more but don't change it <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just so, think it's a fact of life people don't like change most yeah and from on a personal level, I, I've never had one problem with waste management, and I, you know, the service is excellent. And I'm, they, I mean, I've chased them down the road with my garbage because I forgot to put it out, and they're always smiling at me, I'm like, no problem, we'll come back. <laughs> so, you know, on a personal level, and people I've talked to, they're like, we like what we have. Yeah, we really don't want to pay more, but you know, the cost of everything's going up, and we know the service we're getting. We don't know what we would get with the other, so. That's just my, you know, ad hoc survey on my own. <laughs> Anybody, anything else? Well, it, you know, if we, we have to base a decision on the scoring mechanism we got, it's pretty right. cut and dry. No, would I, would I be in favor of a Friday pickup? Personally, no, but I can live without it because I'm not, frequently I'm out of town on a Friday, so if I have to put garbage out, then who picks up my can? Right. Uh, so I wouldn't like that. Uh, you said that your service with waste management is good. Mine's been okay. I wouldn't call it great. Yeah. I live on a L-shaped cul-de-sac, and at the far end of that cul-de-sac, I get missed more often than I would like. Okay. So from that standpoint, but mm -hmm. that's not based on my decision. Right. The decision, the scoring is sort of lopsided, in my opinion. When well, you've got that big of a cost difference, I don't know how, what that scoring mechanism we've been given, how you decide otherwise. And that's what I'm wrestling with. Yeah. I see a big gap in price. Yeah. Well, I'm begging for somebody to tell well, me why I should ignore that. operating as the Budget Advisory Committee, and if this is purely city cost, it would be easy. Oh, well, you know, we, we have the number here. But like I say, ultimately it's passed on to the residents, so they have to have some say in it too. So it's that kind of takes it out of our purview. Same time, I think the commissioners and us through the commissioners, um, we're trying to su supply the residents. This is going to sound Pollyanna. Mm -hmm. Good service at a good price. I mean, everybody everybody says that, so that doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. And could I ask from a purchasing standpoint? Okay, I'm going back. I know I'm going back a little bit toward the quality aspect, but, and I've read the background. Equipment wise, can all three vendors address our issues, or are we seeing a deficiency somewhere? No, all the vendors pretty much offered up a, a pretty reasonable proposal as far as uh, equipment they were going to supply to the city. Okay. I read all of them. Some of it I had to chalk up as it's a little bit of marketing in here. Okay, I've been marketed to before. <laughs> but there was substance to That's I'm trying to wrestle it out. Okay. Any more 
more questions? Anymore? No, thank you. So, are we comfortable making a resolution to the board? Remember, this is just a recommendation to the board. Yeah. We don't have the final say in this. No, 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 no. Yeah. But anytime I, we recommend something, <laughs> I like to feel that we are using our best judgment. Now, the board can say, go 100 degrees. Uh, I know they, I know they, they, yeah, yeah. they have the final say. But do we, are we, I don't know what other information we can get. Are we comfortable making a recommendation to the board? And do I hear a motion? What recommendation would we make? <laughs> well, that's what I think we made. <laughs> I was waiting for that motion. I can't make the motion. <laughs> so I, it's like pushing it down. <laughs> Just breaking, speaking. I'm I'm not hearing anything yet that tells me I should ignore eight million dollars. Correct. I'm I'm kind of begging for someone to tell me mm -hmm. what I might not be seeing here. Right. But I'm seeing eight and million dollars, yeah. and I it doesn't matter if it's coming out of. Parkland Springs, or citizens. Right. I, I is there I haven't heard something that justifies about the eight million? So, an eight, ignoring an eight million dollar gap. So you want to recommend going with Lloyd's Pro? I don't think do. I can't <laughs> make a resolution, can I? If you pass the gavel to the vice chair, you can. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. So I'm, I'm looking for my other three colleagues. Uh, is there a resolution that we would like to make? Well, I, I, can, I, I would make a motion that we recommend to the Board of Commissioners to accept the Waste Pro. I'll second the motion. Roll call vote. Mr. Bergerman? Yes. Mr. Curris? Yes. Vice Chair Hales? Yes. Chair McCloy? Yes. Hopefully number two on the agenda will be a little easier. <laughs> <laughs> we have to call Jane. Okay, let, me, let me just, I just want to see a smile. I just want to see a smile on your face before you fake it, even if you're not happy. I don't know, no. You know, now you know how I felt. <laughs> this is where we couldn't have any ex parte communication. Oops. Huh? Yes, you can, you can go. And now we go into the quote easy subject. Second piece <laughs> on the. Yeah. I wouldn't say easy, but at least it's, it's not uncomfortable. It's not an uncomfortable subject. Just waiting for our HR director to come. Okay. Before we dive into it, could I just ask a few of sure. those questions? I'll wait till sure. the HR person is here. Oh. What's her name? I'm, I'm Jane Niffin. Jane. Jane. And let me ask the question. Is it necessary for the waste management people to stay or for this? They can be like the public and they yeah. can be the public. listen to how I score them with, with salaries and grades and ranges and stuff like that. Uh, the reason we're staying is because. Uh, You're welcome. I'm not trying to. <laughs> no, we, we like seeing it in action. But uh, what I've watched on the film and on video is that. At some point in time, and I didn't know because most of them have been one subject deals. Yeah. We've 
heard at the very end you ask for public comment. That and is correct. That is correct. Answer some of those questions you wanted answers to at the end. So there's nothing confidential that we need to discuss. No, we should be going live. We should be live now on the You're YouTube. Live We're live on YouTube. So <laughs> the new age. That's why we made this nice little room over. So we'd still have a meeting room where you could go live, stream it, have people see it, record, and... Uh, Unfortunately, this room got done, and then COVID came and and uh, put it on hiatus for a while. So, yeah, this room has all the technology technology that the downstairs has for our meetings and stuff. Yeah. So that's why sometimes when we have dual meetings or we had to move a meeting, I'll we don't see. lose. The only thing we can't do is is do them all at one time. Get up on the screen. Oh, see. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> there's what the nation is seeing, you know. <laughs> I'm feeling pressure. <laughs> Where's your box hat? <laughs> All right. All right, here she is. <laughs> yes. You ready for her introduction? <laughs> we don't, yes. <laughs> Hello, Jay. Hello. <laughs> Do you want me to... You're, you're, you're on, you want to go ahead and start the introduction? Um, good afternoon, Jane Niffen, HR Director. I'm here to kind of present the outline or to go over the outline for the salary and classification plan amendments and pay increases for next year. Uh, first, I assume you we, we issued a revised draft because basically, uh, a revised draft. The revised draft. Yeah, Ron, did you hand that yeah. out? Yeah. We really just forgot the internal order, didn't we? Huh? Well, <laughs> it wasn't. Oh. <laughs> is, it, is it dramatically revised? No, one revision. Okay. Adding the you word did. internal auditor, words. Um, we forgot our poor new internal auditor in no, the process. <laughs> and in all fairness to, I won't say to us, but uh, to precedent, if you look at section G above on the uh, 2G, it does say increases will not apply to those probationary employees who started employment April 1st, 21 and thereafter. Right. He started May, May 10th. So it was probably an oversight based on the fact that other employees don't get an increase if they're hired April 1 and thereafter. Okay. But that's not our decision. He's a charter official and therefore it's up to the Board of Commissioners. He reports up to the Board. Exactly, so that's why we included that, that particular position. Okay. Now, I can go through it, or I can just answer questions as you, as you Could see I fit. ask you some general questions sure. up front, just to, then anybody, and then we can go into the specifics. Okie doke. Uh, let me get these. Okay, who conducted the, the survey? Um, uh, internal HR, or did you get this from no. an outside source? Uh, no, what happened is uh, there was a request by the uh, commissioners, and we did conduct it internally. The primary heavy lifting was done by our research and information officer who has conducted most of the surveys for the past 20 years. Um, I was also involved in it, and my staff did provide information uh, with regard to the data. So HR oversees yeah. it. Just to give a little history of it, back, it wasn't 20, but it was a long time ago because I don't even think I was city manager because I was on it. Um, we needed a salary survey. Yep. We had checked, I think, a city south of us, either Pinellas Park, Largo, or somebody did one, and it cost $60,000. We didn't have the city have $60,000 to do a survey. So Judy Staley... Um, our research and information officer, myself, and, J and HR um, kind of looked at what they did and took that as a model and kind of recreated it ourselves. And it's kind of lived on in infamy afterwards where we've kind of used those aspects and uh, 
and, and updated with it. So it's been kind of ongoing for a while that we've been doing this method because their survey that they paid 60000 for pretty much set up. They studied the ones in the area, the ones in Pinellas County, set where to, so really, really taking that, using that as a model since it was a public record document, right. and, uh, and uh, going to ourselves because you'd be surprised how many it's tough to match up different positions in our city with what they call people in their cities and that sort of thing. So that was a lot of what we had to do, kind of matter, because what they called a tech right. one might have been a tech three or vice versa. And uh, that's kind of how we've we've done. I think the last big one we did was 2015, where, where we didn't do updates. We kind of did a full yes. survey. Is that? That's correct. And uh, for a long time, the Florida Municipal Insurance Trust or the Florida League of Cities actually conducted a, 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 a uh, statewide uh, salary survey, and we would use data from their from their uh, comparisons. And that helped us tremendously. But our, 2018, they drop it or when? Yes, they did. Quit doing our it. study was comparable cities in the immediate area. Correct. I mean, what we I, did. Let me ask you, who was we, our comparable? What we did was we looked at um, the entities to which we have been losing employees, our, in other words, our competitors. And if you look at the salary survey, it's uh, City of Dunedin's primary because it's close, uh, Oldsmar, Largo, Pinellas Park, and we are losing employees to Pinellas County as well as Pasco County because a number of our employees actually live in Pasco and it's, uh, for, for whatever reason, probably uh, less travel cost, uh, um, they have chosen to go there. So that's why we use those particular entities because they're they're the ones that we need to worry about. Smart, made sense. That's what I was hoping to hear, and not uh, Chicago <laughs> <laughs> or Miami. Okay. Uh, I'm just firing down to the. Um, what do you think we should be doing going forward? Do you think we should be conducting this survey every X years? I, I could just, I believe, I don't know what you quite said, what the last time we did a survey was a while, but what should be, what do you think our standard should be going forward? Because I know how these surveys always work out. Well, we update every, always on the lower. every year we need to do an update. Um, and we do up, do an update. We kind of update because we, we know, you know, we'll know this time, like we'll know, well, we're starting to get the results in now, what the other cities are doing. So you always got to see what the other cities do, and the next year you got to compensate. If, for instance, I think the city of Gulfport is a city this year that's really catching up because ourselves and those cities we mentioned have really raised the bar and they're losing people. I think they just announced that they're going to, to try to keep up with the other entities in the area. They're going to an 8% for their employees, but you gotta remember they're going at 8% because their salaries are much lower. They, they have to, they're forced to almost the situation we were 15 years ago, um, and, and they're going to an 8%. So, you know, every year we, we, up, we see what the other cities have done and how that puts us out of skew, but I'm thinking probably every three at least years, we probably ought to do a more in-depth in one, in one do and do to uh, up, update, update, and then a, then a full one. I think that's the way it's going to need to go. I think three years is, is the max because otherwise you're, you're out of line with competition. And then when you finally do get around to it, you know, you're talking rather dramatic. Um, when we go out, let's just any one of those cities, are we going out asking for a specific position or are we trying to nail down like a, a job grade range I because I know this what we're going to present covers from the low end up to the high end what what are we what are we asking them what we have done in the past and continue to do is uh, we look at the the ranges um, because it's very difficult to, co uh, to compare an individual person's uh, salary because someone may have been in the position two years, somebody may have been there 20. Okay. So what okay. we do is we look at the ranges. Um, that tells us min and max. Um, in our, our structure, we have 5% between each grade. 
as you, from one from six to seven is five, mm -hmm. seven to eight is five. So those that was based on uh, keeping the the uh, salary uh, schedule. Uh, um, how do I put it? Uh, we don't gerrymander it. We we preserve the integrity, even if there's nobody in a position. Right. Uh, we still have it in there as a placeholder because you never know when you might need it. And you have a fairly, for a job grade, a fairly wide range. And that's what I'm used to from a corporate at one point, you know, having 92 grades down to fewer grades but a wider range. Yes. And, and the, one of the reasons we don't compare individual jobs, we try and, and we do, but best case scenario, you're looking at peaches and nectarines. Worst case scenario, it could be, you know, you have to, in order to get a, a totally clear picture, you would have to look at the job description for each and every position in all of those cities. And that is so time consuming, it's it? probably not worth the effort. But we do compare based on uh, what we see as a comparable position in a, competitive, a competing entity. And I think I mean, the whole thing is to put it. Let me use an easy yeah. one. Okay. Uh, police chief. I mean, that uh, would we still be looking at the range versus? Because I know you you could have a police chief with twenty five years or or, or, or ten years. Or, and I think that's a good good example to use. You you just need to make sure your pay range. You're able to hire somebody based on what the what their qualifications are. Yep. Obviously, if it's a new, you're bringing someone else to give it a chance. Okay, you, your your lower range needs to be competitive with a lower range, but you have to have the ability. If you bring in a 20 year chief of the year, former president of the FPCA or something, that you've got the range to bring them up 75, 80 percent to the top of the salary. So that's why the range is important because when you're looking at somebody for not only sometimes getting them from another city, but once you get them to keep them from another city coming and getting them from you, that you've got that range of where you think you need to put them, whether it's, whether it's lower, midpoint, or at the high portion of the range, or we've hired people, we've hired people at the top of the range just because they're top quality and they're going to be in demand for every city who's looking for them, and we don't want the other city coming in and grabbing them after a year. Very so that range has to be there to do that. If the range is not there to do that, and you top out, but then you're 10, 15,000 lower than your competitors out there, then you're, gonna, you're just bringing them in to train them and lose them to another place. So that range has to be in a point where you can bring them in based on their talents and what they bring to the organization. Right now, the toughest thing is anything in the building, expectors, um, you know, the field inspect, any of those things, the private sector will walk in and offer $20,000 more to them in a, in a drop of a hat. A 50,000 employee, they'll come in 70, 75,000 and snatch them. Now, you can't come up and compete with them completely, but you got to get them high enough to you say, wait a second, the city does have advantages, security, good health plan, health clinic, um, you know, yeah. retirement. So, so it's, and, and you try to tell the younger ones a little harder to tell, but, you know, you need to look at the whole package when you're leaving, not just they're going to pay you this many dollars more. And that's why if you got the right place in the range and you've got the benefits that we can offer, our benefits are kept, and you know, healthcare is one I use for example. What we've done with our healthcare benefits and our, and our uh, center, our health center that they can go to, um, you know, that's a deciding factor. And someone may stay for a little bit more money to go somewhere else, um, you know, ours is quality. So that's kind of what you're looking for to get the ranges in a place so you have that ability to get those people here and keep them here. I'll be honest with you. What I'm used to, this is back in the corporate world, the, the concept of total comp. Mm -hmm. in the, here it's fairly straightforward. In, in the corporate world, they have bonuses, stock options. So you look at all of those. But we're really looking here at salary plus benefits. But you're really... Your study focused on salary, correct? That's true. The bennies were, and I'm led to believe overall we, Tarpon Springs, have a, a decent, a pretty good benny package. Benefits. We probably have one of the best benefit packages in the area. Okay. Uh, we currently have a $250 single, $500 family deductible. Some of them are 2500 
So it, it is um, employees, uh, if, they, if they change jobs, they immediately notice the change in benefits because ours is a very good package. So we kind of in agreement we should do this every three years? Every, oh, yeah. Okay. Easily. I, I agree. If you get beyond that yeah, time period. Easily. And I have one final general question. I know you, you took the golf course employees and put them aside. I was just going to ask why. Because <laughs> they're, they're one, you want to explain the employees there? Well, um, the average age at our golf course is probably 75 or 80. Most of them are retired. And their main interest is playing golf. Well, so get to, um, we pay them through golf. We yes, golf. we do. Okay. We do add a you know they get an added. That's that is one of those perks that you don't normally get in public sector. But it's something you'd see in private sector, like like a membership to a uh, fitness organization. Got it. They get uh, so many rounds of free golf. And then the cart people it. and stuff are ability to get tips. tips so you got i mean but we we don't play, pay that right we pay minimum wage what the minimum wage is but they have the ability to have and you the don't tip ability. seem to have a hard time filling those positions mm -hmm. okay i got it to give no further explanation uh let me open it up to, i i just had a whole laundry list of understanding before we put any other general questions before we dive into the meat of the recommendation I just have uh, uh, two questions, or well, two uh, quick things. So the uh, so the one under the draft in uh, B and C, I just wanted to comment that the ranges in uh, a public service assistant director and a sustainability coordinator were different, a little off. So maybe if that could be corrected, or which what the ranges are in in the. Uh, uh, in the attachment three, and yes. one other place is the. They were just a little. Uh, I believe the range in the one spot said uh, sixty-eight thousand fourteen. That's correct. Uh, mm -hmm. One hundred and nine five seventy-two. I didn't know if that was a mistake, so I just wanted to comment on mm -hmm. those in B and C. And then, in regards to the janitor position, uh, the the janitor position with the library. In public works, is are they, is that full time janitor going to have the ability to go to more, uh, or is he going to be used in other, or she going to be he or she going to be used in other aspects? Yeah, their primary is is the depot in the library, the the tra historic train depot. We do the general. That's their main one. But the full time, well, there may be some when we need assistance in places. There may be some assistance time. There may be some extra time. Their primary though is is library depot. Um, but a full time may give some hours to to assist if we've got somebody out or stuff that may <coughs> add to it. In, in Plus, you can't hardly find anybody part time. <laughs> the part time ability to hire somebody is 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 terrible right now. So it'll help us not have an empty slot that our janitorial people from over here in City Hall have to make up for it because you know with the pay of it and where it is, the part time has not worked for a while. Is that you want to add anything to that, Jane? Yeah. No. Other than going back to your other question, the memo from Mr. Smith was submitted. Uh, prior to us um, having ra moved the ranges. In other words, the position uh, for the um, sustainability coordinator is a wage grade 17, and his memo says 18, but the proposed salary range is that of an, of an 18 because we've moved everybody up. Um, the so here's the problem. Because of number one, <laughs> the, the, there, there are going to be different 17. There's a 17, different money attached to the 17 is now going to have the 18 range. Everyone moves up a step. Move up. So that's why uh, even that's, though the that, number, the grade stays the same, the, uh, the range moves by 5%. Okay. So that's the, that, that's what that was. Okay. In, in regard back to uh, the janitorial position, uh, in the other budgets uh, that we have in a win, maybe it's a question for Ron, but are those, uh, uh, is that budgeted as a cleaning position right now in the other budgets? Can, is there going to be savings by, with, uh, with this position that's going to open up in the other budgets? Like in, in some budgets, I don't have my budget book in front I of me. I think he's talking about where it's budgeted now and where with this change it's going to be budgeted because it is going to move to the time, right? 
Janitor, library, Janitor. yes. You gotta get to the mic, because you're live. Okay. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tom's got a, a, a couple positions in his department, facility maintenance. Separate janitors are taking care of city hall and some other buildings. I think your question what the new position? Yeah, my question is in the budget in the budgets that were presented there's uh, you know cleaning services budgeted inside of those different uh, budgets would no, that be No, you're talking about the two part-time positions converting to the full-time? Yes. yes, which is in library right now and then what the plan is uh, just they'll be charged out. We're going to charge it 70 percent to library uh, Twenty-five percent to uh, facility maintenance and five percent to the train depot is how we're going to okay. allocate that position out. Okay. And currently, in those budgets, are those are they are they staffed positions or uh, right now, or are they? Or, uh, well, the other two positions are, are in the facility maintenance part. I'm sorry. Or are those contracted third party? Like uh, no, cleaning no. services? We've got a full-time person that's all the time. maintaining so just, City Hall here. Okay, so it's all just right. charged out per, per budget? Correct. Okay. Any, any other questions yeah, before we flip back to Jane? Yeah. Um, based on the budget we previously approved, what impact does all of this have on that budget? Ron's ready for you to ask someone. So <laughs> and, Ron was prepared. I told him, Ron was told that so that was going to be. <laughs> yeah. And obviously we if knew. He, if he wasn't prepared, I have to know that question. too because I got to know. I'm okay, I, I got a package together, Ron. Do we? How much does it cost, and are we able to fund it? So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll, you, we'll get you get the same question from the commissioner. As you know, we've got the money that we budget for the three percent for the general employees. The police and fire unions right. are separate with their contracts and stuff. So we got the pot of money for the three percent, and basically we've we've funded all those items on that on your memo there. Items I don't know one through thirteen or something like that with the with the new positions, and with those regrades and reclassifications. We've got about 17,000 that we still need in the budget, but my thought is we can, those char we can find those monies within those departments. Some of those positions won't get hired right away, so I know there will be health savings. When you get a new employee, they don't get health insurance until six months after. Okay. I'm sorry, well, three months after. I'm, my mind is thinking you probably won't get them hired until December or so, and then you, they'll still take three months until after they're hired before they qualify for health insurance. So you got about six months of health insurance that frees up. So it's basically, so I get back to it. It's basically a wash. So most of the impact occurs in the next budget then? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. yeah. next year. Right. So the answer, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Um, Jane, let me put it back to, to you how you'd like to present this. Uh, is there any? Uh, do you mind if I just ask you one more question? Uh, just out of curiosity, in regard to the employer contribution for the city of Tarpon Springs, what is that comparable to the other cities in this area percentage-wise? What What are the other municipalities doing? Comparable to. Depends. You're talking about the last item, and I think Rod, like Rod might want to answer that one because. Yeah, Ron, I think in your backup it, it shows. This the came from a pinch. The general. He employees. did have a backup, and there oh, were okay. competitive. Yeah. You talking about the pension contribution? Yes. Yeah, we the had nine percent, if I remember. Yeah, we went before the pension board. General Employees nine. Pension Board met last week, and they approved to uh, move the General Employees Pension rate from eight point seven percent, which it's been at for about twenty years now, to nine percent. Um, over all the funds, it's about a thirty-five thousand dollar increase, about twenty-five thousand general fund. It, it's a minimal cost. We just thought we'll just have it be absorbed by the departments. They probably, hopefully, have a little bit of little excess there so we just thought we just that'll cover that thirty five thousand dollars and how is that comparable to some of the other cities your pension board been looking well at? we did the survey and our we got our consultant for the general employees pension board he did a survey of i think 15 other cities i did my own which included some more some of the average i think came to 9.45 percent so we're hoping that that helps us bring up, maybe right. might help attract employees and stuff that are on the line. You know, do I go to city at eight, Tarpon Springs at 8.7 or do I, can I get 10% of 
from another city for, for the defined contribution pension. And again, I think our goal is, obviously, our goal is to get to that 9.4 um, or get to the average. This is a, this is a start. Again, it hasn't, hasn't moved, and I'm not quite sure why it hasn't come up to move, but... Um, my, my thought is that what I mentioned, the pension board, I was trying to get it to 10%. I, I go back to my history when there was a few years ago, maybe it was 10 years ago, I got offered a job in another, another city, and that's when it came to light. That's what I found. There's a lot of other cities offering 10%. I mean, it wasn't my... But, you know, I go, well... It was a little bit of a factor, but not much. But I stayed here. <laughs> but this is something <laughs> yeah, we yeah. need to look. We need to look. This is a start to move yeah. in the right direction. <laughs> we, we probably need to look at where that is next. That probably needs to be looked at for the next couple of years and and looked at the possibility of, of, of maybe moving it closer, if that av where that average is, to move it closer. But... This is the initial. This was the initial recommendation. Again, this is the pension board, the city pension board that made the recommendation. Um, Can I ask just one further general question? Yeah. The employee, the employee, the, the, it's not mandatory. Are they able to contribute if they want? Yeah. Do yeah. you have because usually that's tax free. Yeah. For yeah. instance, uh, the, the the city right. does nine. If I'm an employee, can I do a contrib? No. There's no voluntary contribution, or mandatory or voluntary contribution? Well, not to the 401, but we have a 457 plan that you can contribute to, but it's not mandatory. Right. Like I've got the pension not one. Not an education fund, is it? Pardon me? No. Forget it. <laughs> don't, don't confuse me. Okay. <laughs> okay. So well, it's all city, if, if, if I as the employee want to contribute 5%, because you also get that. There's a tax incentive. We don't have that. Yeah, that well, you get a you get the tax deferral from, from the plans, so like my 457 plan. But if I wanted to voluntarily contribute it's to a, the plan. It's a separate plan. The defined plan is funded by the city, but I think the employees have the option with another plan. Yes. A 457 plan. It's through the same ICMA mm -hmm. okay. company. Right. With no matching on that. that I didn't mean to get no caught up in required. the tall grass, so go, uh, let's go ahead and proceed. I have one more question. Okay. What's the vesting schedule on that? Like a city employee, are they, what's? The vesting schedule is a five-year schedule with 20% per year. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to have a minimum of 1,050 hours each year, which is kind of like ha almost, a little better than half time. Mm -hmm. um, so it is by, by your fifth year you will have 100% vested. The other thing I needed, I wanted to mention about the reason we, it's, it's non-contributory for the 401A is because uh, if we allow the, the, the employees to contribute, the IRS says it must be mandatory. And at the time that they brought in this plan, they didn't feel that some of the employees could afford that match. Mm -hmm. So that's why they opened a 457, so that the, those employees who wish to contribute to the 457B were able to do so. And right now, it's ICMA, and the plans mirror each other. So they're getting the same investment that they would as if they were investing in the, in the 401A, if gotcha. they could. Okay. I'll have to Google 457. <laughs> on, uh, I know 401. Okay. Um, let me ask, could I, then we'll go. Do we want Jane to go through this memo step by step? Or I don't think it's necessary. I, my personal opinion, it wasn't mm -hmm. necessary, but I wanted to get. I don't think we need to. I, um, can, I hear a resolution. What are we again making a recommendation to the board? We're making yes, a recommendation to the board. I'll make a motion that we approve what was presented to us. I second. Roll call. Mr. Bergman? Yes. Mr. Kurz? Yes. Vice Chair Hales? Yes. Chair McCloy? Yes. This is a very good uh, recommendation, very understandable. And it's a really tough position. I told you before, because you've got to decide. I'm sure there were other ones other than these, yes, there which was. were, you know, which way do I go? What? It's a lot. Yes, <laughs> you're right. Oh. Thank you, Jane. 
Okay. So we have covered both items on the agenda. Correct. We're good. Now, that moment you have been waiting for it. It <laughs> says, and you've been, may I add, very patient. I'd be fidgety back there. I, uh, we're at the point of the agenda for public comments. All right, we got some. <laughs> okay. I'm going to start us off, Bill Grisham with Waste Management. And um, I want to thank you for allowing public comments. Uh, if I seem a little bit nervous, this is the first time I've ever presented or talked in front of a Citizens Budget Advisory Committee, so I don't exactly know, <laughs> you know how it goes. So if I, oh well, <laughs> if, if I treat it like a, a commission meeting, please forgive me. But we have been servicing uh, this city for 25 years, and the only reason I'm starting off with that is because in that 25 years, we have proudly shown the city and its uh, organizations, everything, what we can do and what we do as a company. I uh, heard a couple of remarks as well. We don't know about the quality of either one of them. We got 25 years to figure out our quality and what we've done uh, for the city. So we come by the houses uh, four times a week. And that's about, I mean, four times a service day. And that's about, you know, 17 17 uh, times a month or 200, 200 times per year. So we collect your garbage, your yard waste, and your recycling. And this is basically when you listen to, to different meetings and different talks, it's almost become an invisible service. And to me, that's a great compliment for our district manager back there because, it's, you know, you just pick it up, it's over with, and it's done. And and our, our proposal was not an educated guess. It was what we've been doing for years, and we offered no change. And that's where the apples to apples come in. Um, the response comparison is not apples to apples. We bid, proposed 14 trucks. They proposed six trucks. So that's a little bit of a difference. But their six trucks picks up, you know, will pick up everything except for it's more days in the city. We're in the city two days a week. So we have to hire enough people, enough drivers to do that. So when I say we propose it that way on purpose, that's the way everybody said they wanted it. That's the way they wanted to keep it. So that's what we did. You know, we have some great route uh, people that could figure out a way to save a bunch of money and maybe come in five days, six days, you know, come in on Sunday. I, I don't know. It's probably against code. But if that's all you want is to save money, you know, you can figure that stuff out and have other alternates uh, on there. So what I'm trying to say is cheaper is not always the answer. It's what you want. You know, it's what the residents want. Uh, if it's the cheapest, then they just hit bingo. You know, but if it's not, then uh, they have to look at it just a little bit differently. And other uh, factors to consider is, the su is sustainability. You know, I have trouble with that word, but um, every day, every time you see us in your city, we are helping the city's sustainability. We are increasing it. We use a majority, 70, 80 percent CNG trucks. They use compressed natural gas. Very expensive trucks. You have to build a fueling station, which we have built. And it, it cuts down on your emissions in the city, and it cuts down on noise. They're very, very quiet trucks. Uh, our drivers are very highly trained, and most of them have been working in the city at least six years. Two of them live in Tarpon, and they have seven to ten years' experience. Excellent service, to me, is not a lucky thing. It's hard work from dedicated and experienced employees. When I say experience, they know the routes, they know the homes, they know, you know, what to do in the city. And, they've, and the best thing about it for the residents is they've been proven very safe. Uh, we have a good uh, safety record here. And then uh, the last thing is the money back into the uh, community, sponsorships, et cetera. No, that's not picking up guards, but that is being a member of the community. And so over the last eight or nine years, we've 
put back into the community with various sponsorships of over $45,000. That's a lot of money. And uh, so, and that doesn't include the millions of dollars it takes to get the CNG trucks and the CNG fueling stations to given back into sustainability. So that's just money like here, go have a good golf tournament or here, have, have a fun uh, 4th of July, that type of thing. So I'm going to sum, sum mine up because I know you're probably getting tired of hearing from me. But, but to keep this great invisible surf, same days, same hours, maintain the sustainability goals, keep the well-known, people know their drivers and dedicated drivers in your neighborhoods, and keep a company in the community that is, wants to be a partner and has done it, has proven it. Well, how is that done? Everything I hear from everybody is, well, it's $8 million. This is $8 million. Well, the, the grand total for five years for every single service we offer the city is an $8 million difference. It is the exact same total as the third bidder. So we have two bidders at one point and, and one down here that bid the same kind of service and a totally different service. Um, but how, what, what does it mean to the residents? Well, it means 24 cents a day. You know, it's $8 million, let's see what it means to the residents, 24 cents a day. Uh, it's just hard to grasp, you know, when you tell a resident it's $8 million difference and it's other, you know, most of that's all other services. But it's 24 cents a day in their pocketbook. So my last question is, is it worth keeping a service that you've had for 25 years that everybody's counted on and very dependable, and I want to say almost invisible. We believe it is, and we think a lot of the residents want to also. So that was my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. George Toke, I'm the district manager uh, here in Pinellas. I've been uh, working on this contract six and a half years. I've been with Waste about 14. Uh, just some of the things that I, I, I listened to the commissioner meeting and what they brought up, the commissioners brought up, and they talked about safety. I just want to tell you guys about some of our safety records that we have here in Tarpon. Uh, if you look at our safety record for last year, TRIR, it's uh, total recordable injury rate. The injury, the time between injuries, uh, the lower the number, the better. You know, waste management of Pinellas for the year of 2020, we were at a 1.18. 2.0 is world class. So, you know, we're being safe out there. We're being safe with the residents. That's, that's our number one priority with waste management, always has been. So then, and keeping the customers and the residents safe is, is also a high priority. You know, we always tell our drivers, we, we want you to go home to your families, and we want our residents to be safe with, with everything that all, all our guys do out there. Uh, it's uh, the, the VAR, Vehicle Accident Record, uh, record Rate. That's uh, the number, the higher the number, the better, right? The time, the hours in between the, the accidents. Uh, we were at 39,000 last year. 25,000 is world class. So it, it's, it's another uh, uh, statement about Waste Management of Pinellas that we really take safety uh, and, and the residents and everything that we do out there very highly. Uh, another thing that we do, we get surveys back. You know, I pulled, up, I pulled up three surveys from Tarpon Springs for the last year. Uh, Cunningham Jean uh, lives on 3014 Charles Court, Tarpon Springs, gave us a 10. Uh, Great crew always pick up trash on time. Uh, Wayne Vaughn, Keystone Road in Tarpon, they do a great job, no problems. You know, like, like that Bill said, 25 years, you know what our service is like. It's not a question of, you, you know, throw it up in the air and hopefully you get good service. You know you're getting good service from us. Uh, Bill brought up the other thing, CNG. We have 75% of our trucks are CNG. Low emissions, uh, no emissions. No, it's not even lower. It's no emissions. Very quiet trucks. We have the, the, the fueling stations in the yard. It's already set up. It's all part of the cost that we did for, for doing business here in Pinellas County. So... I just wanted you guys to know all that stuff as well as what Waste Pro did and, and what they do. We do the same thing. We're already doing it in your, in your town. Thank you. Thank you. 
Hi, good afternoon. I'm Dawn McCormick. I'm Director of Communications for Waste Management throughout the state of Florida. So I work in a lot of different communities and uh, always look forward to presenting, especially to citizens groups. Um, I wanted to highlight a couple things. Um, uh, Mr. Chair, you mentioned you like to Google things. I encourage you to Google a story that we just did on Tuesday this week. It was in Martin County. And uh, we have a new contract there starting October 1st. We happen to, to be delivering 44,000 new recycle carts. But the interesting thing in that clip on WPTV, WPTV is that um, their staff and their um, public works director commented that um, they chose waste management um, and, and chose waste management because of its longtime service over price, over the competitor. And there was a significant price difference. Um, but we also had CNG trucks in Martin County. They're new trucks. We actually purchased 67 new trucks for Martin County. That's $350,000 a truck, so a major investment. Um, and that, that in, indicated part of the price. And I'll add to what George said. Um, when you talk about compressed natural gas-fueled trucks, they save 22 metric tons of greenhouse gas emissions every year per truck. So when we service Tarpon Springs with those trucks, you're making a huge investment in the air quality and in the environment of your city. So I just wanted to highlight that. They also are much quieter in your neighborhoods. So that attributes to some of the, the cost and, and uh, the value that waste management brings. But again, I was just wanted to highlight Martin County's decision to really prioritize service over price and the commissioners there made that decision. And then just one other thing I wanted to highlight because I know, uh, Vice Chair, you asked about the price difference. I'm really proud of the company I work for and the commitment they make to our team members. I know you were just having that discussion on benefits and salaries and things. We have all of the same you know, benefits and 401ks and stock things, but we make a tremendous investment in the education and the training of our team members. We have a new program called Your Tomorrow where all of our team members around the country, including those here in Tarpon Springs, get free education bachelor's degrees, uh, AA degrees, certificate degrees, and then a contributions to masters. So we're investing in our team members, and that's outstanding, but some companies do that. But what we're doing starting in January is we are extending that education benefit to spouses and children of all of our employees. So anyone who works for waste management, the, the team member, the spouse, and the children have an opportunity going forward for free undergraduate degrees. So when you look at a company um, like Waste Management, um, I, I ask you to look at the totality of what we bring to the people who work for us because we attract the best in the business and we're really proud to work there. So thanks. I have to believe that that perk was pretty well received. <laughs> that's, 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 that's big. Very much to, to add to that, I'm doing my reviews with my team right now, and all of the ones that I've met with have already signed up for some kind of certification or going back to school. So, I mean, it's, it's very significant. So my name is Lisa McKnight. I also work for Waste Management. I'm part of the public sector team with Bill Gresham here. And kind of to carry on what Don was speaking to, I was really listening to your conversation about salary comparisons and between the different municipalities, and you talked about salaried range and tenured employees. I kind of feel like waste management, we're your tenured employee, and don't we deserve to maybe be on that higher end because we've proven ourselves? And, you know, when I think about the procurement and some of the questions that were asked, you know, there are different solicitations. Excuse me, I get nervous speaking in front of citizen communities, too. Oh, <laughs> So there are different uh, solicitations that can take place. There are um, ITBs and there are RFPs. And this was very clearly an RFP, and it had 55 points allocated to price and still 45 points allocated to tech the technical component. So if you really wanted to compare apples to apples and understand what your citizens wanted, you could have gone down an ITB path and gone purely down a price, so your decision of making just a price decision would be valid. So, you know, our concern is that this really hasn't been fair as apples to apples, providing service here to your community for a very long time and trying to maintain the service level that you have. So with that, I'll step aside. Can I ask a stupid question? Yes. ITB stands for? Oh, for invitation to bid versus an RFP. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> He's waiting for the last person in the room. So, it's the game they play because they watch commission meetings and instead of because we can't trade minutes and give people minutes anymore, you just bring multiple people so you add up those four minutes. And oh, so, oh, Bill yeah, Gresham's yeah. been around long enough they to get that trip on. down. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Wendy Bittner, and I'm a neighbor of yours in Pasco County. And I uh, live right down 54, so it doesn't take me long to come here and spend money at your fine restaurants downtown. Um, I was here for support for my team. I am, a, I am an independent consultant with waste management. And so I really wasn't prepared to speak. And, but the only thing I, I, I guess I would like to reiterate is the commission um, asked the committee to do several things. You know, look at the apples to apples comparison. Look at the six days a week or five days a week versus two days a week service. Look at the yard waste when the yard waste is being picked up with both services and if that works for the, for the citizens. So a lot of things that the commission directed is what they asked the, uh, this body to do. So, But anyway, I wasn't prepared to do any of that. But thank you guys for letting us give our public comment, and we really appreciate what you're doing. And thank, thank you, the entire team, Waste Management, for the public comments. Thank you. Staff comments? Any? Any? Any comments? I just want to tell you, I, th I think we are, and you know, you're part of our team. You're part of our budget team. And I think we're presenting a good budget for the city for this coming year. We are very lucky. I'm about to, Tuesday night, I'll be given permission to sign that document to get our first six million of the recovery plan, which in a year I'm supposed to be able to sign something for another six million. The, so uh, although 12. I wish we're up to 12, it's 12 points, 12 million, 400. Yeah. So I wish there was a, little, a wider range that we could use the money for, but that's, that's okay um, because we can really speed up some water projects, stormwater projects, infrastructure projects. Um, Again, there are some things we can really move forward. Um, if you remember when we talked about the rate study and why those water rates were so high from 10 years, and I always talk about probably the most bravest commission. I wish I, I got to go back and get their names. Probably the most bravest commission we ever had was to do those 10 years of 8, 9, and 10% raises on the bill, committing to the citizens that not only were they going to fix our infrastructure, so we didn't get into some of the circumstances you saw with other cities, with the flooding, with everything, um, that after that 10 years, we would come back and even things out and do it. Well, we had that money, and we were able to get ahead from 2008, 9 to the present to whereas the major storms, everything hit. We didn't throw sewer into the river. We didn't do all the things you saw the places. But it was, it, was, it was a real cost. It was, you know, some really serious water and sewer rate that the, that the citizens had to pay, but we made that promise. So we've almost got, with this windfall, we've almost got another pot of money that the citizens don't have to finance to keep taking our water, storm water, sewer. Um, we've got old, we've still got a lot of old pipes in these grounds and stuff. And, you know, that's not the glant when you see a budget, no, you know, that stuff is not the glamorous stuff you see in the budget. You want, you know, more glamorous things that you can see in the budget. That isn't the glamorous portion, but, but this is going to give us the chance to not have the citizens have to sacrifice for 10 years to do it. We've got this money available um, to do that, and that's going to be really – people don't realize that we've still got to manage these extra projects. So some of these positions you see in here where I don't think I've given you six new positions in – I don't know even if I've given it to you in my last eight or nine years, but you know I haven't given you too many except some grant ones for police and stuff. But some of the reasons for these positions was to prepare for having to manage, you know, these extra twelve million dollars of projects over the next over the next three or four years. So it's real exciting, not only with this budget that we're going to give to them, but we'll be talking. I'm sure we'll be coming to you when we talk about our strategy for the 12 million expenditure and, and where to use it for, but it's some real exciting times. And I think we're giving a good product to the citizen with this budget we're bringing forward. And, and again, with that extra money that, that we 
finally going to get hopefully the first half in our bank account soon. Um, I, I think it's a real good product we've produced, and I want to thank you for your part in working with us and getting us there. You, you need to find good projects because Ron can only get a half a percent on cash. And then, uh, <laughs> he, can't, he can't get much in the way of cash. <laughs> but, uh, no, that's, that's, that's good to hear. That's, that will help a lot. I wish I agree with. I wish we had a little more flexibility. You know, give us an ultimate flexibility. Mm -hmm. But no, no, there's always strings attached yeah. to it. Let me ask one other thing, Mark. Um, I know we had. I think, like, I'm going to say round numbers, 25 positions. And you, we talked on the phone. You'd already scrubbed it, you know, from mm -hmm. people's. You, so you still have some out there that. What's called on the on the waiting list, or mm -hmm. okay, you're gonna keep. Going. Well, again, and we wanted to look at that because, you know, not only and, and I won't. It's not just the sustainability position that comes up. You know, you know there there's other positions that have been talking about we needed that are more. I don't. I call them special interest, but they're special that, that doesn't realize the other departments who've been asking for positions for a while. And I wanted them to lay out, looking ahead the next three years, maybe three to five years, what are the needs? So when these positions like this come up, that everybody can weigh, okay, sustainability is great and stuff, but you know, Paul Smith in the one position, for instance, he's he's been without that second in command for six years when I moved Bob Robertson. So he's kind of been asking, and the time's coming, especially, and with these projects coming, this is the perfect time to bring it forward. But I just wanted everybody to see, and it, it, it little, you know, it became a little bit, oh, we need all these things. No, but these are things in the future and in the other years we got to look at, and you need to look at the total picture of what the needs of the part. All of them aren't going to be able to be done in the next three right. three years, maybe not even five years, but they need to be on the table to be evaluated. The police and fire ones are going to purely, purely go with these new grants that are supposed to be coming. There are some more grants for public safety to come, whereas if they're going to pay the first three years like they did last time, or they're even talking about some richer packages, those are kind of limbo ones that are sitting there because if that grant comes available and the federal government or the program, you know, you get these for three, you don't really have to start paying for them to the fourth or fifth year down the road. You're going to jump on those when, when, when they come. So they put there in there anticipating that those waves of grants are going to, are, are talked about being in the works. Now, who knows with everything else going on? So those are ones that are in there, but, you know, we're not eminently looking to put on four more police officers or three more firemen. But if the ability and the funding comes forward to do that with, then like we did the last round when we struck, by the time those officers were paid for and the firefighters were paid for and we had to start paying from the city, they were needed then. So they would have been something we'd have had to go to the budget then and pay for ourselves. We got them three years earlier. So, yes, we, we'll, we'll be looking at each one of those other positions and stuff and, uh, you know, where things move forward and how we can prioritize them over the – and, again, depends on the economy, depends on what's going on. Um, if they come in the next couple or, or, you know, if something happens with the economy, they may be further down the road, but they just need to be out there. You just triggered some thought. I, I wanted to ask you. There was one position in here, and it was, Jeff was asking, because we now have the, uh, what do I want to say, the cameras? He mm -hmm. was asking for a position kind of to manage the tapes and everything. Was that one of the positions here or, or not? There's something that it, it it wasn't one of the ones chosen. Like an IT, it had an IT. But why we want to try to get and and you know these cameras a lot of times are coming, we're, we need at least probably six more months of data about what that increase of public records request and the time is going to be, you know we can say it's bad now and stuff but. We need to look. What, what I was thinking and talking with him. Let's get six more months of data. As the, as the cameras are coming out, and we're going to start getting these public records requests, 
Is it something that he's capable with his manpower to do it? Is it a son that's taken somebody from other duties completely? And it could be son in six months, I come back to the board and say, listen, this is out of control and we're losing this. I need a position mid-budget for. But I just think, didn't think we had enough and he agreed, well, we don't because we haven't started the public records. You know, some departments, the bigger cities, they're just getting inundated with, you know, anything that happens, give me the camera footage of this. Give me. So they're assigning people right and left. Is that going to happen here or what is it going to going to look like when it goes, and then to be able to give, because I wouldn't be able to justify, well, we think it could be bad, so we need that position because there could be a lot of requests in. Right now, he's got the ability to handle it, but again, if, if we're looking in six months and all of a sudden it's he's having to take somebody from one of the other duties and they're spending full time on doing this, then it's definitely going to be in the next year's budget, or it may be in a mid-budget item where they're inundated and they're losing services here and we need to do this. But that's just one that we need a little more look at what's going to be the effects of before we could bring it forward and justify it. And I know you know all the positions, but from your background, you know the police positions. I know that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> not, you're not going to hear me turn. All right. Uh, we're still uh, any, other, any further staff comments, board comments? Next meeting, we can decide future say, agenda. We have two vacant alternate positions now because everybody moved up. So if you know of anybody or have friends that want to spend some time with you on the third, <laughs> th third Thursday of every month. Yeah, we'll We're be putting out a call, but if, yeah. again, people in if you know your anybody. field, you know, you've shown your expertise from all your fields to bring to the board. And if you've got friends that like to serve or people you know business wise, you know, we need, you know, we you, like those. That, you think I have oh, a friend? <laughs> well, that's why I said business no, associate too. So. Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll take it on. But uh, so we really need two, two, two mm -hmm. alternatives. Because okay. Cassie and Ms. Bergman are now regular members. They're official. Did, did they get the uh, they salary the increase? Still? Yes, they yep. did. Doubled their salary also. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, the... Got to have a little from budget zero humor. Zero. Uh, <laughs> that is good. With that, it uh, declared the meeting adjourned at 3.32 in the afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.